Um, you know, could be uh, coaching. There's some things when you play quarterback that are never. You never publicly blame your coaching, ever. Mm. Everybody ready? I'm not blaming anything on the coaches. I'm never gonna blame anything on the coaches. Never gonna blame anything on my teammates. I'm a big fan of Justin's. He did blame the coaching. That's just the truth. I know he's trying to take it back now, but he did. Oh, he let that slip. That's how I felt when he said it. Just a wild Wednesday out in Chicago yesterday. Justin Fields, of course, as you saw, started the day responding to a question about playing free, saying some of his limitations could be coaching. By the time practice was over, you saw that there where he was walking all of it back, saying he doesn't blame anyone but himself. All over the place. Justin Fields says he hasn't been able to play like himself for the exact words right now on the worldwide leader in sports beamed out around the world. Hey, Justin, you look great last year, just running all over the place. Now here comes this crazy thing like schemes and ideas from people like coaches <laughs> and you're saying you're playing robotic. It's because the robotic aspect of it, I would think, comes from, hey, Justin, this is your read. This is what you should be doing. This is where your receiver is going to be. And it's just something that he definitely knows. I mean, he... You know, he's he threw against Georgia, right, in that game years ago? He threw every possible pass off of every possible route tree, whether it was one of those frozen ropes or dropping it in a bucket, down a sideline, over the middle. I mean, so what, what was he, just playing street ball for Ohio State? Is that what it was? I, 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 honestly, how else do you take this? And I'll just say this, too, even though – because if Zach Wilson's like, do you think you're letting your team down? No. Why are you playing robotic? Why do you think it is coaching? <laughs> <laughs> that does come across as not accepting responsibility for your problem. Together, but Peter, it was a strange day for the Bears at Hallis Hall on Wednesday. And the one thing that I continue to be astounded by Chris and I spent a lot of time breaking this down yesterday, and I hadn't heard everything that Justin Fields said. But, and this is one of the realities in this age of social media, one little snippet of his comments was packaged in an unfair and overly salacious way by one beat writer, and it took on a life of its own, and it created the impression that Justin Fields, and I think the metaphor that was used was rolled up grenade into the into the coaches room and blame the coaches for his struggles. And when you listen to everything Justin Fields said, even before he came to the locker room to clean it up, he, he didn't do that. And, and that's what would frustrate me if I were the bears that this whole thing on Wednesday took on a life of its own when it shouldn't have. When if folks had listened to everything Justin Fields had said, no one would have concluded reasonably that he's blaming the coaching staff for his robotic play. Yes, he. And the funny part of it, too, is that he's right. It was not put in the proper context. True. However, when put in the proper context, he's blaming the coaches. He did. So the co yeah. ultimately, the point was exactly the same. He does blame coaches, and then he goes on to talk about other things. But you start out by blaming the coaches. You blame yourself. Then if you want to say, you know what, I got to get with the coaches. I got to get the information quicker. I can't be robotic. You know, I'm spontaneous. This is what I did the first couple of years here. I know they want to make me a pocket passer. I, you know, my goal is to be like Lamar Jackson. But right now I'm still learning that process. He might be Cam Newton. He might not be a good pass, a pocket a passer. He might just, that's where you just say, go out and play. And if you get hurt, you get hurt. But you already decided that you traded away the number one pick. You gave that up. You believed in Justin Fields. And that's all management has to say. And the coaching staff, look, we believe in him. We gave up the first round, uh, first pick overall. That's how much we believe in him. He is our quarterback. We will get this right. But they're not a good team. The expectation level, I didn't understand. Still don't understand it. Do I think or did I think he'd rush for a 1,000 yards? Yes. Did I think that they were a six-win team? Yes. That's it. 
Nothing else to see here. Yes, Todd. How does someone from the media not uh, defend the group and, and themselves saying, you know, we want to get clicks. You said that, uh, that's, you know, that they're making me robotic, that there's too much information. The very first thing he said was that uh, it could be the coaching. So, well, the rest of the media doesn't have to try to explain for the original tweet. The original tweet, I, once again, I'll give that to you, that says um, he acknowledged that he's uh, been playing too robotic but uh, then bit the pin off the grenade and rolled it into the building <laughs> with his explanation for why he believes it's that way. And then in parentheses or quotations, it says coaching. That's from the Chicago Tribune reporter. That's, that's it. The pin off the grenade is so funny. <laughs> it's inflammatory. Yeah. <laughs> but he doesn't add anything more. Now, after coaching in parentheses, he could have said, Fields also acknowledged that he's to blame or whatever it might be, but he just put, wow, a lot more on that in a bit. But, you know, it's funny. In today's world, we far too often take one sentence instead of taking five paragraphs, which is if you listen to that, I think you feel a lot, uh, you, you feel like it is not an incendiary thing what Justin Fields said. And quite honestly, after listening to the whole thing, I think if I were talking to him as a media coach or as a PR person, I would have said, you can never say that one sentence that you said, and now I'm forgetting it. But the one sentence that you said about, I don't know, could be coaching. You know, it, it, don't even open that door a crack. However, if you listen to the whole thing, I don't think it's Justin Fields attacking his coaching. I think, you know, it's easy to get clickbait when you actually listen to the actual um, interview in its totality. You see that he was just basically just talking about where he is and maybe he's overthinking. You talk about a guy who was at two coaches in, in, in three years. You talk about a guy that's in a new system that's trying to be something and fight away against his natural nature to be an athlete. Last year, he depended on his legs and we heard Ryan Poles in the off. Uh, season talk about he wants to see what he can do inside of the pocket so maybe he's trying to fight to stay in the pocket because that's what he's been coached to do and not giving up on plays when they're not there and getting those jack yards like we see every other quarterback when plays break down and he's he's in a fight with himself about trying to be the player that he is and the player that he they want him to be. Dan you made that point strongly in our meeting this morning that at least in your opinion his comments were not properly received no, they weren't and, and i think that's why he had to call the reporters back in and explain himself but i thought that was really impressive of him because what he said he wasn't mad like that they that they you know took one word and ran with it he said i'm going to continue to be honest with you guys but in the future i'd really like it if you you know put it in the right context some did others didn't uh but yeah that, that as a reporter i kind of cringed because it's like this is why these guys don't like to talk to us yep. right like he was trying to explain what was going on and they said why do you think you know you, you're, you're overthinking things in the game and you know coaching and he talked about how he's it, his next words were they're doing their job giving me the things i need to pay attention to but he, his point is he may be taking too much of that into game day and not just sort of letting it you know the muscle memory take over so i felt it was a young man being honest about his struggles chris canty you heard the comments dan orlovsky sat here yesterday and said you can't say that as the quarterback, no matter what the circumstances are. What did you think of it? Yeah, Justin Fields deserves all the smoke because you can't get in front of the media and say, well, yeah, the coaching staff might be the reason why I'm paying like a robot and give the media no other plausible explanation as to why you might have poor play. Now, I'm not trying to absolve the hey. Chicago Bears of their fault in failing to develop franchise quarterbacks properly. I mean, you look at the 2000s, Cade McDowell, Rex Grossman, Mitch Trubisky, I mean, the Chicago Bears have shown that they don't have the ability to develop a quarterback. They haven't put Justin Fields in the right situation. But that doesn't mean that Justin Fields doesn't need to be accountable. And forget about the play calling and the scheme that Luke Getzey has. I just want some accountability from Justin Fields for not making mistakes that a quarterback in year three should make. Like being backed up in the shadow of your own goal line in the fourth quarter in a three-point ball game and throwing an interception to Shaq Barrett on a screenplay. 
Forget about calling the same play a couple of times in a row. If you see a muddy picture, if you can't see your intended receiver, you don't throw that ball. Those are mistakes that Justin Fields shouldn't be making, and I'm just wondering where we're going to hear the accountability on that part of it. I, I, just, I feel like if you listen to everything he says, you could not possibly reach the conclusion yeah. that he's not accountable. I, I think you see here what he says during the week. You hear what he says after games. He does seem to be handling all of that. What he doesn't handle is when the game starts and he can't find the open receiver. To me, the real culpability here is the scheme and the system. Yes. They've had five design runs, as Dan Orlovsky mentioned yesterday. And Bart, CC, you guys know as defensive players, when the opposing quarterback can make plays with his feet, it puts an enormous amount of pressure on the defense. Yes. That will help the passing game. Now, look, can he clean up what he said? Absolutely. But if you play better, all this noise will go away. No, you're that, right about that, Mike T. And, and I guess you want the player to use his athletic ability and rely on his instincts. But where's the part about trying to get Justin Fields to adopt the style of play that's going to let him finish an entire regular season? He has yet to play a full regular season because he's been banged up. James I mean, Hurst played that same game. Yeah, Lamar Jackson plays that same game. They have to do a better job it, it, to get better players. Exactly, they're but there. they're having team success. That's the point. Those teams get to the playoffs. Jalen Hurts in his two full seasons as a starter, in the playoffs. Justin Fields ain't getting nowhere close. What is he, 5-22? and 22 Envi at, He's 5-22 and 22 as a starter, Bart. Environment so something matters. has to change Environment in terms matters. of what he's Environment doing. Environment matters, right? I, I asked the question about whether or not they needed to address this publicly from a leadership position obviously they thought they did not as high up as Kevin Warren the president but one step below the general manager and Ryan Poles he did address it he did own the fact that there's adversity and there's turmoil etc obviously he didn't clean it up in your eyes because you're denying the obvious right it's clear finger pointing and then you know what actually I didn't like and I know it's going to come off weird there was that moment in practice yesterday where Justin Fields knew the cameras were on him and he goes up and he hugs Luke Getze, the offensive coordinator, to have this like, oh. hey, look at us. We're friends now. Like, that doesn't mean you're cool. And I think Justin Fields is actually going to be good this weekend. I think they're going to have a little bit of a bounce back in terms of his play, not their winning. Mm -hmm. But that that was just so unnecessary, I thought. That was like this celebrity stage, we're not breaking up paparazzi photo shoot, you know? Like, oh, TMZ is <laughs> hiding in the bushes. Let's make it look like we're at the farmer's market together. That was clearly staged, you know what I'm saying? But I, I don't hate the transparency. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest with you. You're right. It's not great, and it, it could work out the other way, but... Now he's put himself in a situation and say, okay, I'm going to go out here this Sunday and I'm going to play football my way. Right. What better tests are we going to have than to say, okay, let's see what football looks like Justin Fields' way. And if he plays well, what do you think sure. the conversation is going to sure. be next week? No right? doubt. Where's this been? Exactly. Yeah. There you go. So, and if Chiefs, he doesn't right? play well, though. If he doesn't play well, then, you know, that, that's what yeah. it is. Like, yeah. It is chaos <laughs> in Chicago. Pure chaos. What is at stake, though, for Justin Fields against the Chiefs? If they start 0-3, you know yeah, the playoff that's, that's odds. That's tough. And it's the Chiefs. So it's the Chiefs. What's um, the stake? When you ask me what's at stake, it's Justin Fields. Are you here to stay or are you not? Right? I don't even, I don't even want to get into the, the blame game. It's his fault. It's their fault. It's the coaches. We didn't know that you were the real guy. They drafted you in the first round for a reason. It looked good in the beginning. We're in a preseason game. Oh, this is easy. Do you remember said mm -hmm. that? Oh, this is easy. And now the real thing has surfaced. And it looks easy that you can't play the position. And if he doesn't play well this game, I'm not even saying to win the game because I don't think they're going to beat the Chiefs at an arrowhead. Yeah. Patrick Mahomes, Patrick Mahomes, he knows what he's doing. Yeah. Oh, man. Trust your instincts, buddy. <laughs> Defense, yo, he's going to throw y'all picks. I told him to trust instincts. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> if he goes to arrowhead and looks bad, picks, fumbles, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> You got to get rid of him. Yeah. And this will be his last time starting this league. I'm, I'm being serious. Joy, how many petals are serious. left on the flowers that Mahomes gave Yeah. 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 I'm One second. Patty yeah. Smart. Yeah. Yeah. Good James. job out there, kid. <laughs> James, James he, here's what I'm thinking. I think Justin Fields playing for his reputation this weekend completely. Yeah. I don't think he's playing for a starting job, not just yet, but he's playing for his reputation. Y'all remember when Justin Fields came out of college, the majority of America said he should be the second quarterback after Trump. Trevor Lawrence. Out of high school, he was the second best quarterback. In college, he was the second best quarterback. Then in the draft, all of a sudden, Zach Wilson was better than Justin mm. Fields. Trey Lance became better than Justin Fields. And we were like, y'all crazy. What are y'all doing to Justin Fields ranking him so low? He's always been second to Trevor Lawrence. But if he struggles again, 0-3, Justin Fields would have lost 11 consecutive games. The Bears would have thus lost 13 consecutive games. His reputation would completely shift and how people perceive him would completely shift. What Justin Fields is playing for is his reputation across the National Football League from fans, from owners, from general managers, and from players.
Man, this is a gut shot right here because, as y'all know, I roots for Justin Fields. No doubt. Yes, want, you do. I want Justin Fields to go out here and have success. And I know player hater Shady is over there, but I got to agree with my dog, though. <laughs> I, 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 I got to agree with my dog. Oh, man, wait, what you say? What you say? <laughs> He comes on here and he says, you know, I just keeps it real and all that. But he keeping it real on this one. I truly believe that Justin Fields is playing for his job. Mm. He ha Just like we put Zach Wilson in that category, it can't be you. Mm. Can't be you. The reason y'all losing right now is a big reason on the way you're playing. So it cannot be you, Justin Fields. You have to go out here. I'm not saying you got to outdo Patty Mahomes and you got to throw for 400, but you have to look like you are growing. Yeah. Mm. You have to look like you are getting better. You guys are staring in a 3-0, and an 0-3 deficit right now, which means 0-3 is a 1% chance of making the playoffs, which means you're not going. Mm -hmm. So why are we going to continue to put you out there if we know we're not going to the playoffs and it's <coughs> a dude out here in L.A.? Mm -hmm. When we could put Ooh. a dude in Nathan Williams. Peterman that we just signed to go out here and lose games like the Cardinals is putting Dobbs out there to go out there and lose games. And point. now yeah, I can cooking. get he cooking. It's a, good point. a first round quarterback with that number one pick and move Justin Fields and whatever it is, trade him, release him, whatever you're going to do, and let him really go and be a backup in the National Football so League. So I, I got to make two thoughts. Number one, Ryan Pohl's current general manager of the Bears yeah. did not ju draft Justin Fields. Mm -hmm. He passed on Bryce Young yep, yep. to retain Justin Fields. Yep. Keep in mind, the Bears own the Panthers' first-round pick. Mm -hmm. Bryce Young is out this week and potentially further weeks with a le lower leg injury. Oh, they got the, so they got the oh. Panthers' first-round pick, and they, pick. they got their first-round pick. To James's point of, Poles is not dedicated to Justin Fields. I always said, Skip, young quarterbacks, they need to be surrounded and put in the right positions for Period. success. Period. Period. No matter who you are. His offensive coordinator, Luke Getze, he's never coordinated in the National Football mm, yep. League. Mm. Don't tell me anything mm. about past game coordinator for the Green Bay Packers right. when you got Aaron Rodgers. Me, you, and Michael with Aaron Rodgers. We can get MVPs, He's calling too. Game. He's, He's calling, calling the game, He's calling along Lafleur, with LaFleur. LaFleur calls so you place. hire somebody who's never done it, and this is the conversation that we always have about having somebody who's done it versus somebody who didn't do it. You know, the long year he was the offensive coordinator in college in 2018, yep. he wasn't calling plays. No. Dan Mullen at Mississippi State was calling Definitely. plays. And so these guys get hired, but they don't have a real plan in place to make these young quarterbacks be successful and succeed. Mm -hmm. And I think this is some of what you're going to see out of Chicago with this young quarterback. He's not done. He has more ability than what people think. But if you're not being coached up right and you're not, you, you, you can't make the plays and they don't have the right game plan for you, you're in trouble. Right. And that's just the reality of it. Yeah. The reality of it is if he's not coached up right, he's going to show us less than what he is, and it's going to make us question yeah. what type of study habits he has, mm -hmm. what type of player he is, yeah. and in fact, is he really throwing the coaches underneath the bus? I don't believe he is. No, he's, he didn't intend to. He didn't intend to, but he's going to learn in this business. Yes. In this business. Yeah. That's why you watch the great ones, the mm -hmm. Tom Brady's, those guys. They stick to the script. Listen, it's always, we got to play better. It starts <laughs> with me. We got to play better start. You stick to this script. Now, now let's be real. Let's be real. We've never seen Tom in this situation. This is a different situation. I, I, I'm glad you said that, Mike. I, I, I wasn't going to cut situation. you off. I wasn't going to cut I you off. No, no, no. I was going to say. But, uh, but, no, but right, 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 right. Yeah, his coordinator, but, every coordinator no, no. he had called plays I, I understand that. I understand that. But, but I'm talking about learning how to handle the media. Yeah. When, 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 when you're dealing with the media. But when I say I never had Tom, Tom's never been in this situation. He's 5 and 22. Yeah. That means every time, cause I, I've been there. I started my career 1 and 15, 3 and 13. We were 4. That's 4 and 28. You think you got I one? know what you it's think, like. You think you, because you started at 1 and 15, you got one up on me? Because I started at 1 and 15, too. Yeah. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? And, you, and, and, and in New York, Keith, in New York, just like in Dallas, yeah, but or you, in Chicago, you, yeah. what do you get? You yeah. go out to dinner, everybody wants to know off. what's happening, man. Why y'all losing so many games, man? Michael, you, you tore your knee up, too. I didn't tear my knee up. I tore my knee up. Yeah. 
but I'm still at dinner yeah. and they bothering me. Mm. They bothering me. I said, I ain't even on the field. What yeah. are we talking about? They bother. So I know he's what dealing with it in Chicago. He's dealing with it when he's not on the football. Absolutely. Yeah. So he, th th it's getting to him. Yeah. And he's hearing this everywhere he, he, he goes. He comes from a program at Ohio State. And all right. they did was win. So he's frustrated right here. He's frustrated and he's and he's letting it out. This is not the place to let it out. I want to help the young brother there. It's not the place to let it out because you're a quarterback. They're gonna take everything. But 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 now to this, what he's saying. Let's talk about what he's saying because there's some truth to this. I always tell receivers, if you're leaving the huddle thinking about what route do I run, as opposed to thinking, how do I win on this route? <laughs> you already lost. I agree. You, you, totally you already, agree. Lost. already lost. If I'm yeah. leaving the hole, okay, and I'm saying, what do I route? A square in or a deep out? I've already lost. As soon as I hear the play, I got to know what route I run. When I look up, I got to see. I'm starting to read coverage. How do I win on this route? What do I do? He should be set. That's how I have to leave the huddle going toward the line of scrimmage yeah. thinking. He's leaving the huddle thinking way too much right now. Now, that worries me because I say, what kind of coaching does he have? Key, you brought it up. In coaching, there's a system to it. When we practice, there's a system to it. You start practice, we go run routes on air. I'm going to run a hitch, a slant, or out on air. Then they're going to bring in some DBs. We're going to go one-on-one. -on -one. I'm going to run a hitch, slant, and an out on a DB. Then they're going to bring in seven-on-seven. And, and without the offensive defensive line, it was just seven on seven. I'm going to run a hit slant or out on seven on seven. Then they're going to bring in the full team. I'm going to. Why are these guys not doing this with Justin Fields? Give him five plays and learn those five plays. And then we're going to start expanding off those five so you feel comfortable as you're learning each and every step of the way. Key brought it up. If you don't have these kind of coaches, this is the kind of thing that's going to happen to young athletes. That's yeah. why Slip Williams' dad said, I got it. I want to be careful on where my son go. I want to make sure he's not in that kind yeah. of a situation. So I don't cover that team. I'm not around the team. I have had one lengthy conversation with Luke Getze uh, it, last year during the season about fields. Uh, and I saw him in training camp this year. We talked briefly, but I just know that the way the Bears are right now, they are doing everything in their power. Uh, I, I mean everything to make sure that Justin Fields succeeds. This is not, I, I feel it bubbling up now. Uh, you know, the Bears are going to change quarterbacks after the season. No. And I mean, they might. They might. It's up to Justin Fields. But I do think that this team, when they go out and trade for DJ Moore, and they go out and draft to strengthen the offense around uh, Justin Fields, I really think this is a team that is trying everything right now to make sure that Justin Fields is the guy. You can't sit there and say, and I applaud Ryan Pace in the offseason. He had plenty of chances to say, yep, Justin Fields is our no-doubt long-term quarterback. He didn't say that, and good for him, because he shouldn't say it. What he said, in essence, was, we're going to give Justin Fields every opportunity and build a good team around him so that he can be our long-term quarterback but they never guaranteed that he would be. And I think that's right and proper. Nor do I think this should, you know, mar anything about Justin Fields as the leader of his team. Now, Mike, one last thing. This doesn't erase all of the little film clips that you've seen of Justin Fields, not only missing receivers, but missing throwing four open receivers. I think the bigger issue is there is mounting evidence he's maybe not a franchise quarterback. He holds the ball way too long. Many of his sacks, in fact, by a mile in the NFL, he leads the NFL since he got into it, sacks with four-plus seconds in the pocket. His career passer rating is under 80. Is what it is. They created a passer rating so we could get, kind of make these broad kind of, you know, opinions on – how good's quarterback play? They they count a lot of different things. His is low, and he doesn't uh, appear to be improving. So then you have to go deep, 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 deep in the numbers. Well, is he good in the fourth quarter? 
Nope, it's his lowest passer rating, 61 to 9, 61.9. So he's not good late in games. You need great quarterbacks or good late in games, Mahomes, Brady. Okay, but maybe he's good like Russell Wilson. He's good on script. No, his first quarter passer rating's not good either. That's his second lowest passer rating. Not good early, on script, not good late. There's no circumstance he's excelling. I even went this morning and looked, okay, what's his passer rating when he leads? So I've been very critical of Baker Mayfield, but I always said Baker leading with a run game was good. Baker Mayfield's career passer rating when leading a game is 94. Mac Jones, you guys don't like him. His career passer rating when leading is 100. Justin Fields is 62. Two touchdowns, seven picks. Not good early, not good late. Not good leading. Now, I think the running Justin Fields is the best Justin Fields. And I'm not giving up all hope. Who knows what happens in Kansas City? For the record, 50% of first-round quarterbacks do not work. That's first-round quarterbacks. In his draft class, Zach Wilson appears to be a miss. Trey Lance appears to be a miss. Mac Jones is successful, but a lot of people are very critical of him. The good news is, for the Chicago Bears, it is a great college quarterback draft class. You have two potential top eight, ten picks. Aaron Rodgers is out of the division. So there's there's positive news for the franchise. For Justin Fields, you got to go play better and win games. There is mounting evidence. He holds the ball too long. Translation, probably doesn't see the field great. It does feel a lot like Zach Wilson. Got the arm, got the athletic ability, some college success. Why isn't it working? Both have defensive coaches. You can blame offensive coordinators. Go ahead. But generally speaking, it's five stages. It's hype. It's inconsistency. It's mounting losses. Here comes the heat from fans and media. And then it's blame. Yesterday felt a little bit like blame. Again, let's not crush the kid because he said it could be a little coaching. For the record, I don't know why last week they wouldn't let him run. That is on coaching. In fairness to Justin Fields, I would say that's coaching. They obviously told him not to run because he's a good runner.